Hello, Animanian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a logo like this. Okay, so basically we want to make a transparent logo for your kind of brand or a kind of uh, banner for your brand. You can use it for NSFW stuff, you can use it for other art, just how to make a really cool looking watermark that you can add to your renders so it will look fantastic. So the inspiration of this effect is the Judgment logo here, as you can see that it has this knockout area on the inside and then the normal text on the outside. Uh, first things first, uh, let's have a look at the prerequisites. So of course we're going to be using Photoshop here. You can use any other photo, uh, any other kind of software, that uh, photo editing software, um, and also kind of achieve the same result. I'm just going to be showing you the same techniques. Okay, so let's start off. So first things first, for this render here, I use the Wild Zova font. So all we need, need to do is we just search up Wild Zova and you can actually just find it on Defont. Okay, so you can just click on uh, this first font here and you can scroll down and you can just click on download and you'll be able to download uh, this Wild Zova font. So from here, what you can do is you can right click and you can extract all and just extract. Okay, so it'll appear in that new folder here and you can just open it up and you can just click, double click on this OTF file and just press install and just I've already installed it, but you will have to click on yes. And yeah, so that will install the Wild Zova font. Because basically the idea with this was I was trying to get some really, really wild kind of effect like this. And the Wild Zova font has some really, really nice, um, if you have a look at this, like it has a really nice wild effect and some cool, uh, what, do we, what do you call this, um, glyphs, I guess, that are really cool to the character set. From here, I'm just going to create a new, 1920 by 1080 and we're going to start from scratch. Okay, so I'm just going to add in a solid I'm going to add in a solid color. And I'm going to go black. Okay, and I'm just going to put it on top That's fine. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by kind of uh, Putting in our font. Okay, so first of all I'm just going to search up Wild Zova and I'm going to use Wild Zova right here and I'm just going to increase the font size quite a bit and I'm just going to do this for uh, Femshop top because I kind of did this um, for them. I did this initial logo for them. Okay, and what I did is when I was experimenting, I basically saw that this there was a cool glyph. So to find glyphs is pretty easy in Photoshop. All you need to do is you just need to go window and you go glyphs. Okay, then this will open up the glyphs window. And you can see here, I found this really, really cool looking uh, X font, um, this X kind of right here. And all I did is I just basically you just need to search uh, right here and I'm just going to uh, I have to click down first sorry and then you can just uh, search for it here and if you just have a look you have all these cool options I like this X because I knew that it could go on the sides as like a nice border so that's why I kind of made it okay so you can see that it's already kind of starting to form it it's <laughs> it's pretty simple this effect it's not not hard at all okay so we just uh, created uh, one X right here. I'm just going to hold the Alt key and I'm just going to uh, click and drag just to make a copy. And you can see now we have one other copy and I'm just going to move it around with the move tool right here just by clicking and dragging. And I'm gonna right click. In fact, I'm gonna go Control T and I'm gonna go right click, uh, flip horizontal. Okay, you can see that is done, right? So if I just press enter, I just have this one here. And you can see, <laughs> that's pretty much already it. Um, but I will kind of keep on going a little bit. So let's have a look. So what we're gonna do is we are going to create the um, knockout effect, okay? So uh, what I really wanted to create with this kind of thing is, so I, I've created like a, a variation like this right here. So basically all you need is, you can choose a solid, but I am going to choose to create a shape from the pen tool right here. Smaller font, didn't I? I used a much smaller font. So I'm just going to bring down this font right here to a reasonable level. Okay, so just to, I ch changed it. So I selected all the font here with the text tool and press control A to select all of it. And I just brought it down here. Okay, by clicking and dragging. Okay, so that's kind of looking like a good font, font size, I'd say. Um, how did I do it? Okay, I increased these X's quite a bit. Let me just increase this X right here. Okay, and I'm just going to increase the size here. Okay, and I'm probably even just going to 
So what font size did I use? I used 284. Okay, so I'm gonna use 284 on the other side. Okay, so that's cool. Now, let me just, uh, how much did I even use that? Okay, quite a bit. Okay, something like this. I'm just gonna put in the middle. I'm gonna put in the middle here. I'm kind of gonna, wait, first of all, let me just put this in the middle. I'm gonna center it by just looking for those pink points of, yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's in the center right here. Let me use the this one here. Let me click on the text tool and I'm gonna to click in the center here. I'm gonna press control A. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. I think that around that size is good. Okay, and I'm just gonna put it in the center here. And that's in the center. Okay, so now I can just put this and surround it on both sides, like this. Yep, okay. We just, by, by just pressing the shift key, and I'm just gonna press control T just make it a little bit smaller, perhaps. Just, just that much, just a fit within the canvas, I'd say, of the 1920 times 1080. Okay, that looks good, okay. <laughs> now let me just make sure it's all centered. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now let's create that shape. So let's use the pen tool here, and I'm just going to change the fill to white, and I'm just going to create a little bit of a something. I'm just gonna try to hit the center of all these. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to kind of hit this center point here. So basically, I'm trying to cut through it. In fact, let me turn off the fill for now. I'm just gonna make it no fill. So just click on the fill, no fill right there. And I am just going to kind of create a shape. Okay, so I just clicked um, uh, to create that point there. And what you can do here is a very common thing that you can do is you can just press and hold the Alt key here and just drag, click and drag. Okay, so you can make, um, you can kind of adjust the handles of the spline by doing that. In fact, that uh, that's probably too, let me just control Z just a couple bit and maybe just a small amount. I kind of want it to be very narrow and I can just hold, hold Alt and make this a straight line now. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna click and drag and just put it through there as well. In fact, I probably want it to go below the E, but um, I think this is okay. Yep, that's okay. And I And then, so I just click and hold it and you can just move up and down and you can see how you can adjust the angle from that. And now, so that's done here. If we wanna just adjust that line right there, what we can do is we can click on the mouse tool right here. So this is the um, direct selection. So don't confuse it with the path selection. Just make sure that this is the white mouse here. Okay, and what we can do is we can click and drag in this point. We can hold, uh, select that point. We can just zoom in right here by just uh, 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 holding the control and shift keys just to zoom in and out. And what we can do here is we can hold the Alt key just to make this a little bit like that. Fantastic, okay, now we can add the fill. So I'm just gonna click on this fill, I'm gonna add it to um, that, like that, okay? So yeah, we've pretty much accomplished the effect already. So all we need now is just to accomplish a knockout effect. So I'm just gonna make all these, uh, this thing here right here together a group. So what I can do is I can shift select all of them by going shift and left mouse button to select the top to the bottom and just press control G to create a group. I'm just gonna call this group logo. <laughs> Good enough, I don't have a better name. Okay, so from here, what you can do is you can really just hold the control key and uh, left click. And you can see you've made a selection right here. Okay, so all we need here is we can just click on this logo right here, this logo group, and just click on this mask button down here. Okay, this creates a mask. And what we can do is just press control I on this. Okay, so now we're just seeing like the outside here. Okay, so um, basically we've got the outside part here, but we wanna create a knockout layer, right? So what we're gonna hold the Alt key and just click and drag to make another copy. So this is gonna be the knockout layer, I guess. So we're just gonna put the shape underneath this. Okay, so again, let's just say that we didn't have this uh, layer mask, okay? So we just have a copy of the logo there, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna control, left click this to make that selection again, click on the knockout uh, group and just click on mask, okay? So this time we have everything inside of it, okay? So let me just let me just make, a, uh, make it more clear. You can see that I, we have everything inside of it here, right? We have everything inside this um, X. I'm sorry, inside the uh, shape there. Okay, so in order for this effect to work, like you need to have both of these in the same group, okay? So you need to have 
the thing which has the knockout. So I'm just gonna put the blending options and I'm gonna put it to knockout shallow. Okay, so shallow means basically it's going to knock out anything that's in the same group as it. Okay, so, and you can just bring down the fill opacity to zero. Okay, so nothing's happening currently because nothing's in the same group as this group here, this knockout group, right? So we're just gonna put both of these in the same group here. So you can see how I selected both of those and I press control G. Can you see how both of these things, so these are in the same group, which we're gonna call uh, knockout um, layer. Uh, I'm gonna call this knockout font, I guess. Okay, so you can see now that these are in the same group now and we have we set this one to shallow. And basically what we did is, again, we set it to knockout shallow and we changed the fill opacity to zero, that this kind of has a knockout effect. Okay, now when we turn on the logo there, boom, you have this kind of thing right here. Okay, so, because basically what we did here is we just have the area outside, we have two things to this effect, right? So let me just turn off this knockout layer right here. We have this outside part, which is basically just normal font, but we just masked out the middle part. And then we have the middle part, but we just masked out this other part right here with the knockout effect. And then you have this really cool effect like this. So that's pretty much the inspiration behind this is the judgment, the judgment uh, game logo. Okay, so you can see that it basically has this same effect here. Um, and you have a really cool uh, kind of uh, thing which kind of um, stretches like that. You can also just use a plain kind of uh, just a shape. It's just a normal shape, just like a fill a shape with like that. Okay, so you can you can do that and you can just knock it out like that. That's how they did it with the judgment font. Okay, um, so I just did the same thing here with this O here. This O, uh, you can see that basically we just knocked it out the inside and then the outside there is just its own separate uh, layer there. Okay, um, okay, and also just the the outside marks. Okay, so <laughs> I'll just show you how to do the outside marks real quick. So basically, uh, uh, let me just delete this. Oops, let me just right click, delete this vector mask. Okay, so I just took a image of the judgment logo right here. Okay, so I looked up judgment and then I looked for a PNG. Okay, so judgment, like I think even it's just this one here. Okay, so let me just save image as, and I'll just um, blend the projects. I'll just put it into, okay. From there, I'm just going to go into Photoshop. And in fact, I'll just delete this one just so um, hopefully this can make a little bit more sense. Okay, so we grabbed this judgment logo here and Basically, I just sized it up, okay? So I just sized it up and then I just pressed enter. I think I used a more high quality PNG. So in fact, I'll just go back until I found like, yeah, oops, this one here. Okay, so I found a higher quality PNG somewhere. I don't know why, where I found it, um, but I found a higher quality PNG. Um, oh yeah, it was it was in brown. That, so then basically what I did was I just added a, a color overlay right here. So basically you can just go color overlay just make it to 100, just press okay, and then just make it white. Okay, just have it as normal, 100 opacity, press okay, and just turn on the effects, and boom, you have the judgment logo here. Okay, so I just found that online. I forgot where I put it, but you know, <laughs> it's not very important. Okay, so from here, all I need to do is I can just hide everything else for now. And what, you, what I just did is I just literally made a vector mask around here. Okay, so I'm just going to make a vector mask around all these marks. In fact, you need to change this to path here. So just make sure that's on path. And just, I just made a small vector like that. Okay, so I'm just putting some points. I just made a really rough mask around here. Like that. I know that you could, there's probably another way you can make this, but I'm just stealing the judgment kind of marks. I'm sure you could find a grunge texture or something and just mask it out or just uh, set it to screen or something. Um, or another blending mode, but uh, I was just lazy, so I just took this one here. So you can just take this one around here, around here, around here, around here. Um, I guess something like that. And then I just right click uh, once this one is done. Uh, this one's all done, so I'm just gonna right click 
and create vector mask. Hello. I'm going to click on, sorry, I'm going to click on this judgment layer, right click, click create vector mask. And you can now see if I just go control shift and I just zoom out, we have those marks right there. Okay. So that's pretty much it. That's how I took the marks for this. And then I, then I just further mask them out by removing the extra bits. So if I just put this to this layer right here, okay, so I can just kind of move them around right here. Let me just delete the shape layer. Let me just move this around here. Okay, and I could just make another copy of this. In fact, use my selection tool here. I could just delete this one right here. Okay, so basically now this one is the bottom. So this one's the bottom. And then let me just hide this one here for a second. And let me just uh, select this one here and just delete this, this, this from the selection. So now this is the top, right? And then I could literally just move this one up there. Okay, so I could just literally move this one up here. Okay. I can just make a group out of this and I just go uh, edit and I go transform, I can't warp it. <laughs> Let me just make a copy of this layer. So I'll just go alt, oops. Let me just go alt and I'm just gonna copy this out of there. And what I'm gonna do is I am just going to uh, rasterize this whole thing, merge group. And I am just now going to so I right click merge group and I go transform and I can go warp. Uh, let me just use an arc and let me just use this one here. And we, let's just move it down a little bit. Oops. Okay. Yeah. And you can see how it fits a little bit better. We just do like this, All right? We just use a custom arc. And then now we've kind of have that one there. So yeah, that's, that's, and that's how you kind of create this one here. And from there, you can just add in your own image and just use it. So for example, if I just copy my image here, the coolest thing about this effect is you can kind of just use it on top of everything, right? So you can just see that I can put this like whole thing here. So I can just put it underneath and you can see everything underneath, which is a, makes it a really, really, really cool effect. And if you want, in fact, you can make this whole thing, control G, its own logo. Okay, and now we can just transform this one. So we can just press Control T once we select on this group and we can just put this in the bottom. See, we can just put this right in the bottom here and we suddenly have a logo. We have a really cool logo that you can use anywhere, right? So you can just add this into your own kind of uh, renders and you can have this one as your own uh, watermark and just put it down at the bottom and you have something very cool to show. You can make those other ends shorter of the shape, but you can see how good this looks, right? You can just even just put it at the very top, wherever you want, right, as a watermark. And yeah, that's kind of how you do it. So pretty much it.